About six years ago, a new product was invented, the 3D pen. If you don't know what one is, it's basically a hot glue gun, but instead of shooting out glue, it shoots out plastic. So a few months ago, I decided I wanted to learn how to use one. I filmed the process so you can see all the steps along the way. I purchased this pen with my own money because honestly, no one's gonna buy it for me. This particular brand is called 3Doodler. And the cool thing about them is that they actually invented the technology of 3D pen, again, about six years ago. As you can see, I've run into a little bit of problem from the very beginning. It looks like it's just not fitting in. Is the hole the wrong size or maybe the adapter's the wrong size? Oh look, there we go, I got it. What was the trick? You gotta put it in the right hole. And here it is, the first line of plastic. It's honestly a little hard to control. When I press the button on the top of the pen, the motor just goes. You have to keep moving or else the plastic will pile up. Probably the closest analog is like the idle of a car or maybe a frozen yogurt dispenser. You know, once you press that lever, that yogurt's coming out. Perfect swirl or not, here it comes. I'm starting with a robot silhouette and I'm giving it a face. I'm gonna peel that silhouette off the paper and then make another one and connect them together. Ooh, that didn't quite work as planned. That's the fun of learning something new. You make mistakes. I'm gonna make a second silhouette and try to connect the two together. This first project is all about feeling out the medium. I have a lot of design experience, so what can I borrow from that? Where am I now? And what kind of possibilities does the medium hold? These robots definitely don't look nice, but it's impossible to overestimate the value of a first step. Here is a close-up of the pen in action. Again, it's like a hot glue gun. Plastic goes in, plastic comes out, but hot. The main difference being that a small motor constantly pushes the plastic out. Now the big question I'm sure you're all asking is, can you just take the pen and just draw whatever you want in the air? No. The answer is no. You just can't do that. It doesn't work. Here I am trying to draw a spiral and it just doesn't make a spiral. What does work is that you can draw straight lines into the air and then wait for them to cool. This footage is sped up a bit, but with this technique you can get the plastic into three dimensions. Here I am learning how to make basic shapes. Most man-made objects are made from squares or cylinders. By mastering these basic shapes, you can create almost anything that you want. In one of my previous videos, I worked on improving my car sketching skills. It seems obvious, but trying to make something is one of the best ways to learn. If I only practiced simple cubes and shapes, I wouldn't push myself and I wouldn't grow. So here I am making two side panels. We're gonna connect those two side panels with a bumper. And then we're gonna build more connective structures. Then we're just gonna build kind of a skin on top of those structures. I couldn't stop thinking about the mistake from the first robot. Where the robot's eyes and mouth stuck to the paper while the body peeled away. I wanted to do something similar, kind of like a greeting card where a secret message stayed on the paper until the plastic was peeled away. Take that right there and pull it. This one? Yep. Should I pull this one too? Yep, you can pull that one too. Of course, for the next build, I wanted to revisit the robots. This time I wanted to use the kind of wireframe nature of the process to make a three-legged sentry robot. This robot could be used to guard important things, like frozen yogurt. It didn't turn out particularly well, as it still feels a little rough. As the plastic comes in different colors, I wanted to try some red and black color combinations. I sketched this person, They'd be wearing a red robe, black spear, kind of a shield on their back. For both this build and the next, I was going for a faceted look. I wanted the figure to look like it was made from the cut faces of a gemstone, like it was carved from a crisp russet potato. I don't think the final result really matched that expectation, but it's not the worst. The 
figurine was okay, but I was determined to make an awesome faceted skull. What I was just starting to realize was that 3D pens by nature are fairly imprecise. Alas, poor Red Skull Yorick, you deserved better. I was also starting to think about how much this plastic was costing me. I had purchased my 3D pen for about $40. The plastic to make the skull was about $2. I knew going into it that I was paying a premium for the US designed and quality controlled product, and I did expect to pay a little more with the Razor razor blade model 3D dealer used. However, I wanted to experiment with different colors, and I knew that if I jumped ship now, I could buy an inexpensive Chinese white label pen with multiple colors of inexpensive PLA sold by the roll. So that's what I did. The new pen came with a decent but small selection of filament, and I decided to test it by making a dinosaur. There are a few types of 3D pen plastic. I mean, this is nerdy stuff. But one type is ABS, which I've been using. Another type is PLA, which I'm using here. Just to be clear, the 3 doodler can use PLA or ABS, but I had been using ABS up until this point when I switched over to PLA. The main benefit of the PLA was just that it smelled way better than the ABS, which you wouldn't think is a big deal until you're spending several hours with the pen just inches from your face. The dinosaur is coming together nicely, but then I realized I forgot something. The arms, which is understandable with the T-Rex. The white label Chinese pen was obviously quickly designed to reach a low price point, with little thought given to ergonomics. You can't easily see the tip, which is the most important part of the pen. The buttons are on the side, where they're hard to press. However, it does take the nice spooled plastic so you don't have to change out the refill so often, which is actually my main complaint with the 3 Doodler. The stick system, while easy for first time users, is actually more wasteful with each color change and interrupts the creative flow. It is, however, without a doubt, a better pen, which is why I'm still using it in this next build. The concept for this base is to have a dark background with white accent panels selectively applied. Here I am sketching the exterior form. I think this is actually what 3D pens excel at. Rapid ideation of straight lines in space. Think scaffolding, think the Eiffel Tower, think spider webs. This is fun stuff and a really good use of the medium. What 3D pens are terrible at is covering large distances of plastic with precision. Human hands are absolutely amazing and I have no doubt that with unlimited time and a really engaging true crime podcast, you can make a super precise structure. But there are inexpensive machines that are much better at it than us. Look at this actual speed footage. I think I spent about six hours making this face and I wasn't really happy with the results. The next day, I just wanted to use the pen for what it was good for, making these quick 3D sketches. Each medium had strengths and weaknesses. If I wanted to create a scale model of a building, I'd use foam core or cardboard. If I was designing a handle and I wanted to test the ergonomics, I'd use foam followed by 3D printing. If I wanted to make a model of something large that I needed to stand on, I may use plywood. Now, if I want to make a quick wireframe model to gauge relative size, and if the design has kind of a faceted wireframe element to it, I'll use a 3D pen. These sketches were fun and really played to the medium strengths. I was pretty happy with this next project as I made a breakthrough that really helped my designs. Previously, I had been using the 3D pen in the same way that you might decorate a cake with frosting. First, I'd make a form, then I'd kind of just stick stuff to the form, which worked okay, but it made everything a little flat. But the hair of this unicorn taught me was I could make a lot of discrete elements and then apply those elements to a form. Kind of like putting Christmas ornaments on a tree. By doing this, the model feels more textured and real. I liked how this project turned out so much that I'll upload a full video to the channel soon. I wanted to use the same technique on, you guessed it, another robot. The body was pretty simple, just some forms and then wrapping everything like a spider. I really wanted the star of the show to be the jet feet. The robot of course can't fly without a red star on its chest. I drew the flame sparks flat on a piece of paper and then assembled everything together. 
The flame sparks also form the support that the robot would stand on. The smoke is also drawn flat and then assembled to the flames. It turned out okay, but I don't feel like I learned that much with this project. I was mostly just reinforcing the techniques from the unicorn. Ah, the vases. I couldn't go down without a fight. The last one turned out so poorly. By this time, I learned what the 3D pen was good for. I didn't try to make this into a showpiece. I didn't put tons of time into it. I just made a sketch, which is really what the 3D pen just excels at. Then using the sketch as a model, I put it into CAD software. I then let my robot friend make it for me. But that's really not the point of this project, so we'll just skip this part. I wanted to do something extravagant for this project. Again, I was still thinking about the idea of making something big out of a lot of small pieces. So I designed this skull that would be made of small circles. It would have a flower motif, kind of Day of the Dead-esque, because I didn't want to do teeth or jaw. I decided to give the skull a flower gas mask. My wife pointed out that one of the eyes of the skull was way off. So I did a little surgery and gave the skull a facelift. There we go. Much better. Here I am applying some yellow accents. I got really close to finishing the mask when my cheaper 3D pen decided to jam. I can't say I was surprised I got what I paid for, but it took me about a half hour to figure out where it was jamming and how to fix it. Once everything was back together, just the last few touches, and the mask turned out nicely. I was just about done with the 3D pen in general, but I felt like I hadn't quite made the robot of my dreams, so I went all in on this one. Instead of making my cartoony forms, I started with a stick skeleton, and then added a bunch of elements onto the skeleton. I created fake hydraulics, trusses, mechanical details, armor, swords. By creating all these layers, the robot had a great texture. Any small imperfections are easy to overlook when there's so much detail. The robot, of course, needed a stand, which was pretty simple to make. Be careful with the torch. It turned out well, I was pretty proud of this. And I'll also upload a full build video to the channel later. This robot, however, did take several hours to build. As you can see, I spent a lot of hours making things. And as you can also see, I got better as I went along, with more time spent on the later projects as I transitioned from experimenting with the medium to producing more refined objects. It took a bit, but I've now built a fun new skill. If you liked what you saw, subscribe. I'll be posting a few in-depth follow-up videos focusing on the unicorn and robot builds, and it would be a shame if someone else saw them before you.